Hey Internet, it's Alex R on Fight Games one more time, and today I want to make a video where I'm going to talk about this project that I did. I ranked up all 51 characters in Tekken 7. Uh, so I've got thoughts about that process, and I've got thoughts about all the different characters, and I want to share that with you today. So what did we do? Uh, my buddy Jaguar Bomb, aka Spoon of Oats, said this to me in Discord at one point. He said, all purple roster before Tekken 8. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Uh, the, the kind of straightforward way to do this would have been to just get a single character to Tekken God Prime. Uh, I haven't done that. I did it manually. Uh, my characters start at like uh, Seiryu, so I had to like rank them up twice to get them to Tekken 8. So let me let me start showing you characters. Here is my uh, here's my current as of today uh, rank list. So here you can see these are my my most you know top most uh, ranked up characters. The top six here, like I am a Kazuya main, right? I main Kazuya. And in competitive situations, I might pull out, you know, any one of these top six characters. They're mostly characters that I played a lot back in Tag 2. Uh, my main team in Tag 2 was, you know, Kazuya paired with somebody. Um, generally, like, Heihachi or Jinpachi or June. Um, a lot of June. Um, but yeah, so sometimes I'm working. Uh, so these are characters that I played like a lot, right? Like I, you know, like Heihachi um, is one of the characters I played, you know, the most. But you know, I'm, I'm I am a Kazuya main. So in like a competitive situation, I might pull out any of these top six, basically, uh, depending on the context. Um, they're pretty much my favorite characters in Tekken Seven. Uh, I played them quite a bit. Then after that, we've got characters that I've like been playing just because they're fun, like and I enjoy them. Like I play, you know, I like Nina. Nina's, I. Nina's great. Nina's great. And Bob. Oh my God. If like if you are a Mishima player, I heartily recommend that you play Bob. He's like, uh, kind of like a fun Mishima with like with stuff. Um, he's got like kind of ridiculous shenanigans. Um, he's got like, uh. He doesn't have like an electric as such, but Crouch Dash One is like fills a very similar spot. Um, he's got a safe hop kick that's nuts. Um, his punishment is super good. Bob is fantastic. Zafina, like you know, I played a lot of Zafina. Um, she's really straightforward. She might seem complicated, but um, like you can learn Zafina. Uh, you can basically. I was just talking to one of my friends about this today. You can pretty much ignore like one of her stances. You don't need Tarantula really. Um Zafina's for the bang that you get, like the effectiveness of Zafina, like learning her, uh, it's not that hurt. Um King from like I love King. Um I play him basically like pretty similar to how I play Armor King, which is not, you know, I'm not a King specialist. Um but I use the stuff that he's got in common with Armor King. Um, he's he's really good, you know. He's got like good counter hits. Um, King is super strong in this game. Um, Zhao Yu, I played mostly just because she's like she's fun. Um, her basic Tekken tools are surprisingly solid. Like, you know, she's got like a good stature kick and she's got a safe death fist. That's nuts. Um, you can see my win rate with her is like relatively high. Um, people just don't understand how to fight against her, you know, up till, you know, for quite some time. So if you've got basic Tekken and you can learn like a couple of like stupid Jiu gimmicks, like you're good to go with Jiu. Um, Jin is really, I play like a really simple like basic Jin. And Brian, <laughs> too. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about those two. Um, Brian is super good. I think Brian is really, really strong um, in this game. And I think he's fun. Um, he's unusual. Um, he has he lacks a lot of kind of like normal Tekken tools. You know, he doesn't have like a normal down forward one. He doesn't have a hop kick. He doesn't have a launching down forward two. But, like, his counter hit game is so good. You can set up, like, fantastic counter hits all the time. Like, 
I uh, haven't learned to do the taunt stuff to like get unblockables, but like that's a thing that if I was gonna play more Brian, I would probably start learning next. Um, Brian's fun. I play Asuka basically similar, like I like I mentioned, I played a lot of June in Tag Two, so I kind of play Asuka by analogy with how I used to play June. Um, yeah. Asuka's alright. Um, she's good at setting up counter hits too. She's actually very similar to Brian in a lot of ways. Devil Jin is really interesting for me. You can see here, Devil Jin is actually my second most played character, but his rank is really relatively low here for me. Um, and his win rate is pretty low. So I've had a, like just a really hard time ranking up Devil Jin into the blue ranks. Like I wanted to get him to Yaksa up with those other characters. Uh, like my top ones, but like I, I couldn't make that happen. Here I haven't been able to, and you know, it's looking unlikely in the, um, in the last month of of the time when people are going to be playing this game much. Um, it's really interesting to me. Like I, I think it's a real gap in my gameplay, like my inability to make Double Jin work well. Like. The stuff that Kazuya has, you would think that Devil Jin would be able to do that too. But it's just like, I don't know, like I, I can't make people eat the 50-50 somehow, and the, the timing traps that you seem to want to set up as like a good Devil Jin, he just, I was never good with him. And for most of this game's lifespan, he was supposed to be, uh, I mean this is a lot of games I've played with him, right? Like quite a few. Um, not all of them ranked, obviously, you know, they're player matches, lobby matches with friends. But he has been my weakest Mishima for years. Like, back in Tag 2, I couldn't play him very well either. And, uh, I think it's a real, like, weakness in my gameplay that I need to work on. And I think if I could make Devil Jin work well, uh, like, he's really fun to use. He's really fun to use. Like I love doing his combos, and his tools are, are fun, and I like him a lot more than Jin. Um, but you can see, like my win rate with him is is uh, oh, it's not that much lower. Man, yeah, but like for the amount of time, it seems like I should have been able to do better with Devil Jin. I think it's it's a real weakness in my gameplay. Uh, Lily, Lily's so fun. Lily is one of those characters where she feels immediately powerful. And like, if you can basically play Tekken and you can learn just like a few things, like learn a combo with Lily, she's like immediately good. The amount of like study and practice that you have to put in for the effectiveness is so low. It's such a good ratio. Um, Katarina even more so. I think like, I have had like one of the lowest win rates against any character against Katarina. She's like relatively rare, but also like straightforward to learn, but also defending against her is like just like tragically difficult. Like Katarina is really, really strong in this game. Just like extremely strong. And I think I should play her more. Like I think the right thing to do if Tekken 8 wasn't about to drop would be like play Katarina a lot more so I like don't suck so bad at the matchup. Like I, I seriously I lose the majority of the time when I fight the Captain Man. Hmm. Chloe? Uh... Actually, I really like Chloe, actually. Like, I didn't love her design at first, but... And it's contentious, like, a lot of people really dislike her, but I think she's super fun. Um, I think she's well-designed. I love all of the little rhythm games in her. Um, I think her moveset is fun. She probably does too much damage, but... Uh... She has some real bad matchups, I think. And once somebody understands how to defend against Chloe, it's it's hard. It can be hard for the Chloe player. Um, Josie is sick. Um, you know, she's a lot like Bruce. I, I played for a bit of Bruce in Tag 2. Um, Josie's great. Eliza is really fun. Eliza is the um, meter character, the 2D character that I played the most. Um, I really enjoy doing her combos, she's fun. I can't do the like super high execution like ones where you do like 27 instant dive kicks in a combo, but I can like pick up with instant dive kick. Um, 
that was neat. Like, that was a good experience learning to do the TKs for her. Um, good times. Yeah. Eliza's really fun. Like, doing Tiger Knee instant dive kicks is, uh, is cool. Um, also I spar with an Eliza player a lot. Uh, shout outs to Miss Unsmiley. Uh, so, like, I spent a lot of time, like, thinking about that matchup. But, yeah, Eliza's great. I hope she comes back, to be totally honest. Even if they, like, I think people probably don't want, you know, meter in Tekken 8. But she didn't have it in Tekken Revolution, and she was still kind of interesting there. I made a video about learning her in Tekken Revolution years ago. Um, and Leroy, uh, I'm, I'm glad he's back in Tekken 8. What a, what a fantastic design. He was obviously too strong uh, when he launched, but I think he's great now, like... Uh, obviously still strong, but like fun to play against. Neat moveset, like beautiful character design. Great character. Um, Dragonov is great. I love Dragonov. Um, he looks so good in Tekken 8. I'm excited to play him a little bit. He's fun. I think like Dragonov, you can basically learn him. Uh, if you can play Tekken, you can learn Dragonov. He's, he's like not too complicated. Just like an overall like well-rounded good character. Um, it'd be good if his mates hit, you know, <laughs> that hitboxes. Uh, Jack7, to be totally honest, I have mixed feelings about Jack. I think Jack is sick. Okay, here's the thing I think is sick about Jack. I think the combo you used to have to do off Jack Hammer, where you ha used to have to do the, um, the uh, EMGF, where he goes, one. I think one is sick, and I think hitting Jackhammer into one is sick. Um, it's interesting that he has, like, defined weaknesses, but he's, his strengths are so strong. His, like, he has safe lows that are plus on hit. That's screwed up. Like, full crouch down back one is nuts. Um, yeah. He can play really, really solid, but also he has, like, disgusting gimmicks. Uh... Jack. Master Raven, um... I've played, like, a fair bit of- not, like, a whole lot, but, like, i played some Master Raven. I think she's really fun. Um, I think she's really, really strong. Uh, and I love her design. She's complicated, and she- like, her combos are kind of hard to do. Um, but I think- with more practice. She's, like, I think she's strong, but you gotta put in work to get the strength. Um, and that's interesting. And she's very flashy, and, um, yeah. Cool, uh, cool character design. I, I like her design more than, um, more than regular Raven, who's coming back for T8, but they're very similar characters. Just, like, aesthetically, I think Master Raven is better, personally. I mean, you know, like, she's hot. Like, you know, how do you not, like, hot ninja lady? Um, Yoshimitsu. I picked up Yoshimitsu for this project, specifically. So basically, like, all these characters above here, I had played a little bit before that project, which was, um, late 2023. Uh, my friend told me to do this. Um, so I finished the... I finished the Get Everybody to Purple project like in October and I'm just now making the video. But all those characters I had been playing before, um, I don't know, September or whenever, he told me to do it. Um, so, oh, my music stopped. Let me restart the music. Sorry. Music's back. Um, okay, keep at it. <laughs> this is going too long, apparently. Uh, Alright, so Yoshimitsu was one of the characters I um, started playing for this project. He's so fun. Like, he's one of those characters I didn't know that I was gonna love playing him, but I really enjoy Yoshimitsu. I've been playing him uh, a fair bit. He's complicated, and his combos are a bit not like hard hard, but they're a bit challenging. Um, and his damage output is kind of low, at least with the combos that I'm able to do. Um, and he's very strange. But, uh, he does have some pretty good, like, basic Tekken tools, and and he's fun. Um, recommend playing Yoshimitsu. Claudio is really, really easy. 
Um, he's straightforward, obviously powerful. Um, he's got very, very normal Tekken tools. Um, if you like Claudio, you should play Claudio. He's not my favorite, but like design-wise, but he's he's straightforward and easy. Um, Kunimitsu Jr. is very strong in Tekken 7, obviously. Um, yeah, I liked her mom better. I liked Kuni 1. Uh, but she was obviously a weaker character in, in, um, in Tag 2. Paul? Paul is sick. I don't play a lot of Paul, but he's in top condition, right? How do you not love Paul? Like, just whiff punishing something with that fist, especially like if, if you like step something or they whiff something at like fairly close range, and you can just like put your fist like entirely through them, it's uh, it's so satisfying. Um, I understand it's probably not fun to be on the on the receiving end of it. It's tense, is what it is. Uh, Paul is so strong in this game. Law is so strong in this game. Law is really fun. Um, I like Bruce Lee, and I like Law, and it was fun ranking him up. Uh, Horroron is like complicated, and uh, one of my younger Discord buddy is like learning Horroron right now, and he's discouraged by the complexity, but uh, it's not that bad, right? He, you, you have to think about what stance you're in, and he's got four stances that you gotta worry about. Um, but it's, you know, stick with it, it's fine. It's it's not that complicated. I think people, Horong I think only gets a pass because he's a legacy character. And if people, if he came out DLC, people would have just utter conniptions uh, about how complicated he is. He's, he's an immense burden on the defender. And I think the amount of learning that you do as a Horong player creates so much more offense versus like the amount of like study and understanding that the defender has to put in. He's he's just like I think it's out of control actually. I, I don't love the design. Uh, but he's like a legacy character and people uh, let him get away with it. They don't complain too much. Okay. Um Steve, uh, Steve is fun. Um, Steve also seems really complex, but I think uh, you don't need to use the whole moveset at once. Like if you're learning Steve, like I, I just learned kind of like a relatively simple Steve. Uh, but it's important to learn to defend against him, kind of in a similar way to Horong, actually. Um, he's Steve is especially a menace for Mishima players. So I think like any like Kazuya with some survivability is gonna have to like learn how to understand the Steve matchup because it's rough for Kazuya, Steve especially. Um, Leo is so underrated from a strength perspective. Um, they're not my favorite, you know, design-wise, but uh, you know they're fine. Like if people love Leo, then uh, then they love Leo. Leo is your Tekken character. Um, I think Leo's really strong, underratedly strong. Um, I think their lows are super good. And they've got like stance shenanigans that's hard to deal with. Um, yeah, I think Leo is quite good and hard to defend against. Um, Lars? You can see the win rate on Lars. I basically, I learned like one combo on Lars and just stomped everybody. It's, um, his combos are so easy and so consistent. Um, I didn't, I, I have, I never loved Lars, but, um, you know, whatever. Like, if you like Lars, you like Lars. Um, shoutouts to Lunch for loving Lars. Uh, but he's, he's straightforward to play. He's very, very easy to pick up. Um, Elisa, similarly, uh, very straightforward, um, to play at a basic level. Like, if you can play Tekken, you can, you can learn a basic Elisa. And then I didn't, when I was playing her, I didn't even use Destruction Stance. Like, and that's so strong. Um, I didn't need Destruction Stance. And I'm sure, like, if I had spent, you know, another day learning um, the Chainsaws, then that would have 
been. But yeah, Elisa is quite good. Um, Shaheen, I played basically analogously with um, with Law. He's pretty straightforward. His combos are fun. That's I, like I don't love his design. Um, he says like I take no joy from this victory, but uh, <laughs> I, I basically took no joy from his victories either, uh, except for his combos. His combos are are fun. Uh, fun to do. It's neat that you do like several um, stance cancels like during a combo, which sounds hard, but it's not. Like if you just like look up a basic combo, um, you can do the stance cancels. Not hard. Um, Gigas. Oh my god, Gigas is fantastic. Gigas is so fun. Uh, and what's fun about Gigas is the footsies button. He's got just this staggeringly good demon claw. He can do forward forward two, and it takes up like the whole screen. His his fist is immense and he reaches so far and his jab range is ludicrously good um neutral with gigas is is very easy in the sense that you can just like kind of keep them at arm's reach at arm's reach uh, and then he has like some stupid gimmicks um so gigas is uh i i enjoy gigas more than i thought i was gonna enjoy him um we, I had some, he well, took like some work to rank him up, like, um, his combos are harder than you would think, and if you don't do the good combos, his damage output is relatively low, uh, and he doesn't have like a great power low, uh, he's kind of more about setting up counter hits, so I think, I think he's kind of like a specialist character, um, but... Uh, yeah, people who love Lee, like, you know, stick with it. And he, he's really strong at a high level once you, like, learn how to use him. Um, but I think... So he's one of those characters where, like, you gotta put in work to have him be, like, really effective. Um, actually, similar with Akuma. Uh, at a low level, nobody understands how to defend against Akuma, but, like, to get, like, the real juice out of Akuma... I mean, obviously, like, the juice that you get out of Akuma is, like, Staggeringly immense and, and probably um, uh, <laughs> probably overtuned. You know, I, I think it, it's uncontroversial to say that at the high end he's the best character in the game. Uh, but uh, yeah, Akuma. I, I didn't. I'm not really a Street Fighter player, and I didn't play Street Fighter Four at any kind of like competitive level. So I, you know, I didn't have like the FADCs on lock uh, when I was learning him. Uh, Kuma and Panda are, like, more fun than I thought. Um, their combos are fun to do. Uh, they have a lot of stupid shenanigans. I think bears are basically attacks on everybody who doesn't play bears. Uh, defending against bears is a, a chore. Um, yeah. <laughs> Defending against bears is a chore. The existence of bears is a chore. Spectators like them. I guess the people who like them are spectators and bear players. They're okay. Kuma's a good boy, right? He's he's learning more. Uh, uh, his story is actually really touching. Like that, he he just like loves Heihachi so much, you know, and he can't bear the thought that um that his uh, that his human is gone. Which is pretty uh, pretty charming. Sadly. Um, Eddie is a character that exists. Eddie is another one of those characters that's like attacks on everybody except for Eddie players. What I so if you wanna play Eddie, please learn to play Tekken. Please learn to like have some kind of defense and like the thing about Eddie, he has a 13 frame wall standing punish. There's only a couple of characters in the game that have a 13 frame wall standing punish. That's Kazuya, Josie, Eddie, and meter characters, and that's it. Eddie can launch at 13 frames. Very high level, very high rank, not high level. Eddie players do not know this and don't do it. Um, it's disgusting. 
Um, yeah. Miguel is real straightforward. Um, if you can play Tekken, you can play Miguel. Um, he was he was kind of fun playing him. I enjoyed it. Um, very normal, normal Tekken character. He's got a stance for pressure. Uh, he does big punch. You know, Miguel. He's a Tekken character. Geese was um, Geese was harder than I expected. Actually, like people are like, oh, I mean, at a high level, obviously Geese is very very strong. Um, and people say that he's the easiest meter character, like 2D character, to learn. Um, because he's kind of the most Tekken-y. Um, his combos, like, the good combos are difficult. Like, you gotta do half circles, um, to end with the, uh, the good ender. Um, and his, like, uh, the deadly rave rage art is actually difficult to input. That takes, like, some, some practice. Um, so Geese was fun. He harder than I expected. Um, Noctis. I think Noctis is another one of those characters that, like, for the amount of practice that you have to put in, the amount of power that you get is is like a very very high return for a relatively low investment. They say that Noctis has the like a weakness at fighting up close, but he's got like really good down forward one strings and really good counter hit tools and a parry. And like he's he's really strong. He's really really strong. Even if you can get close to him, like uh also, I dislike basically everything about him. Like, I don't like his move list, I don't like his aesthetics, I hate his voice. Uh... What I like about Noctis is that my friend Chris, who's a very, very good friend of mine, loves Noctis and plays Noctis. So most of the time if I'm fighting a Noctis, it's Chris, so I'm happy, so shout out to Chris. Uh, that's the only thing I like about Noctis. Um, Lei is another one of those characters, like, he's kind of like a tricky, like, complicated character. Um, I don't love him. Uh, I don't love Lei. He's got a couple of moves that are satisfying to do, and his basic Tekken tools are kind of, like, more, uh, more solid than you would think. So you can play pretty dry, like, normal Tekken with him, but, um, I think if he came out as DLC, people would have a conniption. He, he gets, he's another one of those gets a pass because he's, uh, uh, because he's legacy. Um, what I like about Lei is understanding the matchup and, uh, beating Lei players. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, y'all gotta hold that. If you, if you, you think you're gonna knowledge check somebody and then, and then you didn't get, you didn't get the knowledge check, well, who's clever now? Marduk is sick. He's uh, he's a very large gentleman and he hits very, very hard. Marduk is fantastic. Restart the music! Uh, what else? Okay, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Uh, Julia, um, Julia's pretty straightforward. Uh, she, like, her tools are straightforward and easy to use and good. She's very, very strong in this game. Um, and her combos are kind of fun to do, um, especially if you do, like, the wind roll cancels. I think wind roll is really good in neutral. Um, I don't hate her design. Um, I think some people dislike the streamer persona, but it's... I don't know. I mean, she's cool. She's, she's probably too good in this game. Uh... I think she has basically everything you could want in a Tekken character. Um, it was pretty straightforward to learn her enough to rank her up. Uh, Negan, I think, is one of the best designed newcomers. I love Negan's moveset. Uh, it's really satisfying. His his forward forward two like Gigas is um, is super. Like, just, just incredible. Like he puts out just such a big hitbox, like, forward advancing. Uh, it's incredible. And I think he's fun to fight against. Um, I like things that are, like, the, the down back two uh, bat smash, I think is really fun as a move, both to do and defend against. Because it's like, you can, you can see it. 
if you're like really spot on, and I, I love things that are like reaction checks like that. It's like seeable if you're um, if you're really on it. Um, I think Intimidation Stance is fun, both to use and defend against. I, Negan is great. Um, Negan is fantastic. Uh, Ganryu is more fun than I thought. Uh, I think he's really interesting. Like he doesn't. He's one of the, the couple of characters that doesn't have a ten frame jab, um, and that's fun to play around. His jab is really strong, but it's uh, twelve frames um, and plus three. So his jab, and then on counter hit, which is sick. Like if you hit with a jab on counter hit, it's like plus ten or something, and you get a guaranteed headbutt, and that's um, that's sick. Genry is a really interesting character. Um, and he's fun to play. Fakamrelum, uh, I didn't love him. I don't love the design aesthetically, but that's just me. Um, I think he looks like a silly doodle, you know, that somebody, like a 13 year old did in a math notebook. Uh, is, he's kind of interesting though, like the guard break stuff is interesting. Um, his combos are kind of fun to do. Uh, I think he might. He was probably too nerfed in the recent patches. He was he was probably too strong on release, and then probably too nerfed. Um, and then finally, Lydia. I I love her design aesthetically. I think she's super cool. Um, I love that they made like like she's really pretty, but she's like also presents like as a very like grown woman, and I, I like that. Um, and her moveset is fun. Her animations are great. Um, I think they nerfed her wrong. Uh, I think she's too weak right now, but I think what they changed is the wrong stuff, uh, to be totally honest. Um, and I didn't, I, I had been playing her like back when she was strong. Um, she wasn't part of the, part of the like fall um, series of, of characters that I ranked up. Um, but yeah, I think she's fun to fight against. Even even when she was overtuned, I think she was still fun to fight against. I really I like the moveset a lot, um, and I like the character design. Um, she's really cool. I hope she comes back. Um, yeah, so that's all the characters, and that's my thoughts on them. Um, so, in closing, characters like characters that are straightforward ones you can basically play Tekken. So like Julia, like she's weird. Like her her moveset is unusual for a Tekken character, but her tools are so basic and so strong. And, like, she's got, like, really good power lows, um, she's got, like, st stupidly good mids, like, Ford Ford 1 is, like, an absurdly good mid. Um, the, the dash punch, what do you call that, um, Swift Step? Swift Step is, like, an incredibly good approach tool. Julia's, and that sidestep 3 plus 4 is nuts. Um, it's, like, why does she have an Asuka back 3 for a character, like, a rushdown character? That's absurd. It's so hard to punish. Julia's really good, um, and I think easy to learn, despite being unusual as a Tekken character. Um, Kunimitsu is similar in the sense that she's slightly unusual, but also pretty easy to learn. Um, yeah, straightforward, um, obviously powerful. Law is sick, and if you can play Tekken, then you can play Law. Um, he's really fun, he's really strong. Um, Lars is probably not strong at the high end. <laughs> Lars is not strong at the high end, but uh, he's straightforward. Um, characters are more difficult than I expected. Geese was harder than I thought he would be, but Geese is sick. I, I love this guest character design. Um, just fantastic. Lee is harder than I thought. Like, getting his combos down is, is difficult. Um, his game plan is a bit odd, um, despite being a very normal Tekken character. Um, and then more fun than I expected, Ganryu, more fun than I expected, um, weird character, uh, just really fun. Uh, Gigas for the, for the reach and the 442, fantastic. Uh, and then Yoshimitsu, like, I've been playing Yoshimitsu, like, even after the project, I've been playing, running him on ranked, uh, recently, he's good times. Farewell. Uh, alright, so, that's enough video. Uh, onward and upward. I'll see y'all in Tekken 8. Uh, have a great day. Happy holidays. It's still Hanukkah for me, so happy Hanukkah and happy other holidays. See y'all later.